Eve and Isa. Allah did free the woman of responsibility for the original sin. There was a rumor floating around, you know, that all sin came from women because after all it was Eve who gave that apple to Adam. And it was through Eve that all sin came into existence. Well, the Quran came and revealed to us that both sinned, both were tempted, both sinned, both repented, and both were forgiven. One was not held more responsible for that act than the other. But in another area of the Quran, it speaks about the fact that on the day of judgment, a man must answer for himself, his wife, and his children, while the wife answers only for herself and her children. So a man has a degree of responsibility stronger than that of the woman. We won't make any judgments on that, just something to think about. Over 1400 years ago, it was ordered that women be educated. It was ordered that all members of society be educated. And a prisoner of war could gain their freedom by teaching a Muslim to read and write. That's all that was necessary. This is how important education was considered. Indeed, the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, shows the importance of education in that amongst all of the women that he married, there was only one who was not highly educated. All of the mothers of the believers were very educated women. They could read, they could write, they studied, they learned, they were brilliant minds. And his choice was the educated woman. Education is vitally important to everyone, and so we are told to seek knowledge if we must go into China or into the ends of the earth, to seek knowledge. Do not forget in the quest for seeking knowledge that the most important knowledge that you can have is the knowledge of the Quran. Because all other knowledge is wasted if you don't know what to do with it. And it is the Quran and the Quran alone that gives us the guidance on what to do with other forms of knowledge. So never neglect the knowledge of the Quran and seeking knowledge of the Quran. That's first and foremost above, above everything else. Well, along with the command that women should be educated, Allah ordered that the woman's voice would be heard. That's right. Our opinions must be heard. Our evidence must be taken. We have a right to be heard. We were given also the right to own our own property to conduct our own affairs, to dispose of or earn our own wealth and income. And that which we have, that which we earn, that which we inherit, whatever is ours and ours alone, and no one else is allowed to touch it. We have absolute and complete control over that which is ours. We do not have to use our income to provide for ourselves in any way because our fathers are to provide for us or our brothers or our husbands or our uncles or our male cousins. The financial responsibility lays upon the man and yet the woman has absolute and complete control over her own wealth. And yet, the woman has complete and absolute control over whatever business ventures that she may have. And even the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, worked for a woman. He took his orders from a woman. He took his pay from a woman. And he never did anything that was against Islam. We go on in talking about true liberation. 
and tell you that the woman also was given the right to choose her own husband. A woman cannot be married without her consent under any circumstances. There's a lot of advice given on how to choose the proper spouse for your daughter or for your son. I only wish Muslims of today followed any of them. I only wish the Muslims of today, our mothers and our fathers, gave the girls their right, the right that they were ordered to give to their daughters and letting their daughters choose their own husbands. When looking for a husband for our daughters, we are supposed to look first at the religious nature of the individual. First and foremost, religious nature. And then you look towards things that increase compatibility. So you're going to look at educational level, you're going to look at social status, you're going to look at a lot of other things. But first and foremost is the religious standing of the individual and their understanding of Quran and Sunnah. And if you choose a son-in-law, no matter how much money he has, if he is not living by the Sunnah, your daughter will never be treated the way that she has a right to be treated. And your grandchildren will never have the joy that they have a right to. And it will be your responsibility because you have chosen your son-in-law for the wrong reasons. As well as a woman was given the right to choose her own husband, the woman was also given the right to divorce. That's right. A lot of people think that divorce is only a right of men. This is not true. You will read in the Sunnah that a woman came before the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, requesting a divorce from her husband. And the Prophet questioned her and, and she admitted that this was a very good man. He was a very kind man. He would provide for her very well. She just didn't like the way he looked. That's all. She didn't like the way he looked and he granted her a divorce. Just on those grounds and those grounds alone. There's a lot of people who talk about, well, you know, divorce laws are not fair in Islam because all a man has to do is say, I divorce you three times and his divorce is finished. But a woman has to go before a Qadi in order to get her divorce. <clears throat> Let's not confuse culture and cultural practices with what is in the Quran. Think about this a little bit as you're studying Quran and Sunnah. Okay, yes, a man pronounces three times divorce. He must wait until his wife has, is clean from her menses. And then he makes number one, pronouncement number one. Okay, so this is not done in a state of anger. He has to wait until she's clean from a second menses to make the second pronunciation. And he must wait until the third menses to make the third pronunciation. He must spend that entire three months. His divorce is not granted like this. And he can't stand there and say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. This is not a proper divorce. And it's not an acceptable divorce and it is punishable. Now the woman, when the woman decides to seek divorce, she goes before the Qadi, the divorce is granted, finished. I'm not saying this is the way it's practiced in countries, I'm saying this is the way it's written in the Sunnah. It's finished. Now a man, when he takes his divorce, there's a possibility that he can go back with his wife. When a woman takes a divorce, it's irrevocable. Brothers, don't ever make your wives unhappy enough to divorce you because you cannot have them again. Don't drive your wives to divorce. You may get upset, but don't drive your wife enough to make her get upset to divorce you. It's finished. But I ask you which one is really easy, not which one is practiced in different countries, but by the Sunnah, which one? I don't think the man has the privilege in this. Now one of the wonderful things also is that the Quran has provided the woman with protection throughout her married life. 
he must treat her with compassion, kindness, and love. These are the words that are used in the Quran. Kindness, compassion, and love. He must work with her in mutual consultation because on the day of judgment the man is called to account for every unhappiness that he causes to his wife. Every bit of unhappiness the man is held responsible for. But ladies, don't think you get off. Okay? Because on the day of judgment you're going to have to answer for the unhappiness you bring your husbands to.